Let's get right into it. Michael Santo, uh, thank you for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. Looks like uh, you're still muted there, so if you just want to unmute and uh, we'll get you. Sorry about that. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, no problem, no problem. So let's uh, talk right about it here. Uh, first off, for, for families that see these grocery prices uh, continuing to peak up there on, on many uh, items, uh, how will this help uh, uh, help them when it's all said and done, maybe months down the line? Well, the president has highlighted a number of ways that on the healthcare side, including particularly um, uh, uh, continuing uh, uh, measures that keep their uh, health insurance premiums low. So that will help. And then for elderly under Medicare, there's a number of measures that will help. And then there's some uh, government powers that will allow the federal government to negotiate directly with pharmaceutical companies. So those are the elements that they're highlighting. But I also think that a lot of this bill is actually an energy bill, and it has measures to promote wind, solar, and in a way, even natural gas and oil, which we're heavily dependent on. And what I was most happy about the energy component is that there's money to maintain our nuclear reactors, which is excessive fear in this country of but are critical to maintaining our energy security and maintaining our electricity that powers virtually everything, including obviously the Zoom conversation. And uh, Michael, let's also uh, talk about, um, you know, for, for, for people who are j just hearing about this maybe and talking about a bill that is almost a billion dollars, $775 million that it's going to cost. For people that uh, hear the Inflation Reduction Act, tell us how, uh, by spending money, uh, it, it help in the long term that uh, this inflation will go down? Well, well, there is one key thing that will actually help in that regard. A key component, but not the only, to the inflation that, that we see, which is the worst in 40 years, has been an, a little bit of an overheating economy. And there is a tax component to it. And there's two parts to it. There's a minimum tax for corporations, which fortunately will hit very few corporations, I think 40 and, and minimally. So it shouldn't hurt the stock market. And then there's a 1% tax on um, stock buybacks. And government taxes act like brakes. And as we know, the Federal Reserve is hitting the brakes by raising uh, interest rates and also by doing quantitative tightening where it starts to reduce the size of its balance sheet. The, the opposite of quantitative easing that it did in the financial crisis in 2008, 2009 to head off another Great Depression and what was done probably got a little carried away at the height of the pandemic when virtually our whole country was shut down. So the taxes act as a little bit of a break. And the, the good thing, one of the good things about taxes is you can always lower them late, later, but they don't directly affect average Americans and they're quite modest. And that can help offset even spending components of this bill that could have slight inflationary pressure, but very, very minimal. And Michael, in the political nature that we live in, where it was just so hard to even get to this point here, as the president mentioned that uh, it, it took um, all of the Democrats there, no Republicans signing on this. If we didn't live in this political uh, really nature where it's if it's not for us, then it, we're not going to do any of it. But maybe say 20, uh, 30 years ago when, when the political maybe temperature wasn't as high as this, could we have seen maybe 20, 30 years ago if they wanted to do something similar like this? Uh, would Republicans have signed on to this or, or, or what's your thinking? Uh, probably kind of yes, actually. And this is a rather moderate bill because the two conservative Democrats in the Senate held tight. And so it, it isn't a very, very, very liberal, as we call it in the United States, although there's different meanings outside of the United States. It, it's not a very leftist bill by any means. It's a very moderate bill. But Senator McConnell, to his credit, did sign off and support on a couple of Biden's early initiatives. I think one of the major infrastructure bills. So even in this horribly partisan 
uh, environment, as you very aptly point out, which is terrible, very tribal, very extreme, always blaming each other for everything, which is terrible for uh, the well, emotional well-being and the psychology of Americans that plays a role in our economy. McConnell did support a couple initiatives early on, to his credit, even in the ugly environment. But I think that's what's going on. And so I mostly didn't enjoy the Democratic speeches, although I was thinking to emphasize how strong of a situation the United States is in long term economically and in particularly in energy and technology and even in agriculture. But I was actually pleased that he then ended President Biden with talking about how he believes in America, which should not be viewed as a partisan uh, belief at all. But that's something that I do want to highlight. We are very blessed in this country in terms of energy resources, natural resources, food resources, mining, and the certain things that we let the Chinese take over, like rare earths, and we need and lithium, and we need to take those back. And the bill has introduces some of those elements, which should be a bipartisan issue that for national security, that we are not dependent in critical areas like rare earth and lithium. And this is a big problem right now. We are very dependent on China on these things. But I love the way that he ended the speech, optimistic. But yes, I think you hit on exactly the point and the big problem that we have, that everything is so extremely tribal and partisan and, and finger pointing, and it's terrible. It, it just has a very bad effect on the emotional well-being of Americans. Yeah, so true. And, you know, other countries look at that and they're, they're thinking, wow, well, what is going on with, with uh, Americans in their politics there? But uh, thank you so much, Michael, for coming on and uh, 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 waiting for President Biden to wrap up there and really giving us some insights on, onto this bill and uh, what it could mean. And by the way, remember, remember, we're still the number one energy producer in the world, natural gas and oil. Everyone likes to rip on oil, natural gas, and there's some anti-fracking people, whatever. We're very blessed in this country with the resources that we have. And same in neighboring Canada, which is one of our closest friends. There we go. There we go. Michael uh, Santo, thank you so much for breaking it all down. You're very welcome. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. No problem.